What's happening guys, Shane here. So a few quick things. Number one, I just passed 1000 subscribers. And over the past few months, I've tried just about every legal method that is known to man to promote a YouTube channel and get subscribers and viewers to my channel. And most of them were about as successful as Logan Paul's boxing career. But one of the methods that I did have some success with was YouTube ads. And in this video, I'm gonna go over exactly how I set up the ads, how I ran the ads, um, what results I got from running the ads, what type of ads I recommend running. And I'm also gonna go over some of the mistakes I made and some of the things that pop up when you are running these ads, some tips and tricks that you can use so that you can save a lot of time and trouble for yourself if you decide to use them for your channel. And as a bonus, I did run some experiments on these ads and I'm gonna show you what I learned from these experiments and what you can learn about the YouTube algorithm from them as well. So first, let's jump right in and go over the videos that I used to run these ads. So the first thing I wanna mention is the only type of ad that you should be running is what's known as a discovery ad. And this is the type of ad that pops up on the right-hand side of the screen in the suggested box, and it has some yellow text on it. And the reason that you should only run these types of ads is because people have the option of whether or not they see your video. They know it's an ad and they choose to click on it anyways. Whereas all of the other types of ads that I know of, they don't really have an option. They show up before the video or after the video or the most annoying ones are the ones that pop up in the middle of the video. So they don't really have an option whether they want to see those ads or not. And because of that, they are very, very unlikely to subscribe to your channel. Whereas with discovery ads, they know it's an ad, they click on it anyways because they're so interested in whatever topic it is and they choose to watch your video and they're much, much more likely to subscribe. And if they do subscribe, they're much more likely to come back to your channel. So with that out of the way, the first types of discovery ads that I tried to run were ones that were just directly to one of the videos that I uploaded. So this is one of the videos I uploaded, which is my lifestyle creep video, where I basically just talk about how all human beings naturally have this tendency to spend more money when they make more money. And this is what results in people like Mike Tyson, who made half a billion dollars, you know, $500 million fortune, and he squandered all of it. This is why 80% of lottery winners go broke and about 70% of professional athletes file for bankruptcy. And avoiding lifestyle creep is probably one of the most important things you could possibly do in your life because just about everybody makes that mistake. But anyways, I uploaded this video and, and you can kind of see with this graph here, it didn't really get very many views. And then right around here is when I started running ads to it. Ran ads, ran ads, ran ads, and then I stopped running ads. You can kind of see here that it still promoted the video a little bit. And in all of the experiments that I did, I noticed that it would continue promoting the video even after I stopped the ads. Now, it's not like it promoted it like crazy, but I definitely noticed that it sort of rewarded you for running ads to videos. And this could just be a total coincidence, but I did notice over and over again with all the videos that I ran ads to, the algorithm would continue promoting my videos even after I stopped paying them money, it would promote them a little bit more than what it was doing before I started the ads. Now, one of the downsides of running ads to a normal video is your audience retention goes down a lot. And I'm gonna go over this a little bit more later on when I go over the experiments, but just remember that your audience retention goes down a lot. I believe the audience retention on this one was four minutes before I started running the ads and then it went down quite a bit afterwards. Now, overall, I got about 22 subscribers from this video, which is not very good at all considering I ran 3.5 thousand views to the video. I think 3,200 of those were ad views. So that's really, really, really bad. And I think I spent $200 or so running ads to this video and so, 22 subscribers for $200, that's about $10 per subscriber, which is not cost effective and definitely is not a good return on your investment. So overall, I do not recommend running ads to a normal video. And what I mean by a normal video is just a video that's like 10 or 15 minutes long, like a normal video that you would upload. Don't really recommend running ads to a video like that, except with one exception. If you have a brand new channel 
and you maybe have like got 10 videos on the channel and each of them has only about 50 views or maybe 100 views at most, what you can do is you can run ads to maybe five of them, get about a thousand views on five different videos, and then have those videos featured on your home page. So I'll probably go over this in a different video about how to set up your home page, but basically you want popular uploads to be the first thing that pops up when somebody comes to your page or one of the first ones that pops up. And the reason for this is because of social proof. And if you know anything about marketing, you'll know how important social proof is, but basically, when other people see that a lot of people are watching your videos, they are much more likely to watch your videos. I mean, it is astounding the difference that social proof makes, to be honest with you. I knew about it and I knew that it was a powerful thing because I have a background in sales, but I didn't know how important it was until I started doing marketing on the internet. It is so important. So when somebody comes to your channel and they see that all your videos only have like 50 views, they are not very likely to watch any of your videos and they're probably just leave and go to a better channel. So as you can see here, there's about six slots. So the one exception to what I said before with running ads to videos is filling up these six slots with about a thousand views each. It's gonna really cause people to be more likely to check out your channel when they are on your home page. But other than that, I don't recommend running ads to normal videos. What I recommend doing instead is creating a minute and a half long intro video. And basically what this video is, is it goes over the value proposition of your channel. So what is a viewer going to get out of your channel? If they decide to subscribe to your channel, what benefit are they going to get? It's sort of like an elevator pitch where you just pitch your channel in a minute and a half. And the way you wanna set this up is briefly introduce yourself, talk about what your channel's about, and then talk about why they should subscribe to your channel, what benefit they would get from subscribing to your channel. And if you wanna see an example of this, I made a video just like this. It was my Why Personal Finance Matters video. And in this video, I give them a super quick background on me, I tell them what what my channel is about and I tell them what they're gonna get from subscribing to my channel. Now, I do sort of regret how I made this video because I realized after the fact, just because of the fact that I cut the video down so much, it kind of came across like I was begging for subscribers. And I really did not mean for this to be what it was. Like, I don't want anybody to feel sorry for me. If you know me in real life, you'd know for a fact that I do not care about anybody feeling sorry for me. And in fact, I don't want anybody to feel that way. But I realized after the fact, just looking at some of the comments and stuff that it did kind of come across that way. Like I was like trying to get their sympathy and beg for subscribers. And I really did not mean for it to come across that way. So be careful about how you put this video together. I did it really quickly. I probably did it in a few hours at the most. And I should have thought it out a little bit more and put a little more thought into how it was going to be perceived by other people. So that's just kind of a pro tip for you guys. Uh, take your time making this video because a lot of people are gonna see it. Every single person who comes to your channel is gonna see this video. And so it's sort of like making a first impression on somebody. So you really do want to be very careful how you construct the video. So with this other video, you know, I probably spent about $200 on it and I got 22 subscribers, which is not a good ROI at all. It's about $10 per subscriber. With this video, I spent around $800, $700, somewhere around there, and I got 220 subscribers. So much, much better, somewhere around $5 per subscriber overall. But towards the end, you know, I wasted a lot of money doing ads I shouldn't have done. Towards the end, I got it down to about $1 per subscriber, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did that and how you can do it as well. So taking you into the back end of my Google Ads account, these are the people that I targeted. So I've seen some other YouTubers who run YouTube ads. One of them did it professionally, and he's kind of the guy that I watched uh, just to try to set my ads up. 
and they get it down to about 50 cents per subscriber, and that's pretty dang good. I was pretty happy to get it down to a dollar per subscriber. Now, you might be thinking at this point, you don't wanna pay a dollar for every single subscriber that you get, because that would mean that you'd have to pay a thousand dollars for a thousand subscribers, but hear me out really quickly, because it goes way beyond the value of the subscriber. What's really important is that it tells the YouTube algorithm what types of people to show your videos to. So I really only got a few hundred subscribers by doing this. I think overall, maybe around 300 or so, 250, 300. But what ended up happening is the algorithm figured out what type of people to show my videos to from the ads that I used to run views to my videos. And this process could take six months, it could take a year, it could take a year and a half. If you look on YouTube forums, you'll see all the time people posting hundreds of videos and years before the algorithm finally starts to pick up. And I was able to speed this process up quite a bit by running ads to my channel. And I noticed a huge bump even in other videos after I ran ads to my channel. So other videos started getting much higher click-through rate and much higher average view duration because YouTube was showing these types of videos, the types of videos that my viewers are more likely to watch. Because YouTube was showing my work to people that I want watching it. I hope that makes sense to you guys. So it's not just the value of the subscribers that you're buying through these ads, but it helps YouTube, it speeds up that process of YouTube showing your videos to the right people. So let me give you an example of this. Let's say that you're a beauty or fashion blogger and you review makeup products. YouTube is very likely to show your video to everybody. So show your videos to people who don't wear makeup. So they might show them to a 70 year old man or they might show them to a 13 year old teenage boy. Two different types of people who are not likely to click on your videos. So because of that, when you're first starting as a YouTuber, your click-through rate is really, really low. Like it's probably 2%, 3% click-through rate. Even if you make a really good thumbnail, your click-through rate's gonna be very, very low because YouTube is showing your videos to everybody. So using this process, running ads to your work, to your channel for a few months, you can really speed up the process of YouTube figuring out that, oh, hey, when I show this beauty channel's videos to 18 year old girls, they're much more likely to click on it than when I show it to a 70 year old guy. And that really speeds up the process and it can save you months, if not sometimes maybe even years of time growing your channel. And like I said before, I definitely noticed that my click through rates on other videos that I never even ran ads to went up as well as my average view duration. So YouTube got smart. The algorithm is smarter than we give it credit for, but we can still help the algorithm out a little bit by kind of bumping it in the right direction by showing ads on our channel. Now, the third thing that this is very, very important for, besides getting you some subscribers and helping YouTube out with the algorithm, is making sure that your videos get shown to the people that you want your videos to be shown to. Now, you might be thinking, what's the difference between number two and number three? It's basically the same thing, right? Well, let me explain. Let's go back to the example of the beauty vlogger. So you're uploading some videos, you know, makeup or tutorial work, something like that, and YouTube starts showing it to 70 year old men. And let's just say that you happen to be a very attractive YouTuber and your end goal is to sell your makeup products to younger ladies. You know, that's your target demographic, younger ladies. You wanna be like the next Kylie Jenner. Well, unfortunately, there might be a bunch of older men men that click on your videos a lot and that is going to tell the YouTube algorithm to show your videos to older guys. Let's say there's like a bunch of creepy old guys that like to watch your videos just because you're attractive. You don't want these guys watching your videos but the algorithm is showing your stuff to these people even though you don't want them to. So what running ads allows you to do is have a little bit more control over what the algorithm does. So even if these sorts of people are clicking on your videos, you can help the algorithm figure out who your target demographic is by building up your subscriber base in the first few hundred subscribers. Now, the fourth thing that it does to help you out 
is it gives you a little bit of social proof. When someone comes to your channel and they see that you have 100 subscribers versus 10, they're much more likely to subscribe to you. I noticed this over and over again. When I got 100 subscribers, people were way more likely to subscribe to me when I had 10. Same with the difference between one subscriber and 10 subscribers. And then when I got to like around 500, I saw a big jump again. And now that I'm at 1,000, I see another big jump. More and more people are subscribing to me every single day, even though I'm not putting that much more effort into it. So as you get bigger, it gets easier and easier to get more subscribers because of the power of social proof. So overall, you absolutely don't have to run ads to your channel in order to get subscribers. There's other ways of doing it. I go over that in other videos that I've uploaded and I will be going over other methods in the future as well. So stay tuned. Definitely subscribe to my channel if you wanna see that. I like being as transparent as possible and I'm really into experimenting and I always document all of my little experiments and everything I do so that I can show you guys and look back on it myself later on. But I really do recommend doing this with your first couple hundred subscribers just to let the YouTube algorithm know who you want them to show your videos to. This will really speed up the process. In terms of the actual ROI, you know, the return on investment, how much it actually costs you to obtain a subscriber at the early stages. There's other things you can do that are better. There's other methods that are better, but because of the reasons I mentioned, I still do recommend this if you can afford to do it. And let me save you a lot of time and trouble by telling you how you can get it down to about $1 per subscriber. So first of all, do what I already mentioned, you know, make the minute and a half video, put a lot of thought into it, make it really good entertaining, have a strong call to action at some point during the video, tell them why they should subscribe to your channel. And then here's the key, start running ads to other channels that are in your niche. So the two types of ad groups that I found to be the most successful were either running ads to other channels that are in my niche. So for instance, financial education, Jeremy, and then Minority Mindset, he does a lot of cool videos as well. So personal finance, uh, minimalism, entrepreneurship, saving money, making more money, investing, all of these are sort of in my niche or close to being in my niche. And so I ran ads to these types of channels. And then the other type of ad that I ran was to affinity. And what that basically means is Google has a list of people that they think are graduating from college pretty soon. They also have another list of people who they think are avid investors and they will run their advertisements to those types of people. Now, after testing these different types extensively, I have found that it is much, much better to run your ads to other people's channels that are within your niche. It's much cheaper. These uh, affinity ads were a lot more expensive and I ended up paying a lot more for these and then when I killed them, when I cut them off, my costs went down quite a bit. Pick 10 or 20 channels that are within your niche run your ads to them every single day. I would recommend just start off by spending a dollar a day and it will automatically figure out for you which channels are getting you the best ROI. And then all you have to do is just go in, maybe check once a week, kill the ads that aren't getting a good ROI. They aren't getting you any subscribers or conversions or anything like that. And then keep running the ones that are and then just do that over and over and over again, and eventually you're gonna get your costs down ridiculously low to the point where you're basically only spending like a dollar per subscriber, or you, maybe you can do better than me and get 50 cents per subscriber like some of the other YouTube gurus claim. But yeah, that's my pro tip for doing this if you do decide to run these YouTube ads. Let me know if you want me to go over how to set these up because it is a little bit of a process. It would probably be maybe a 20 or 30 minute video, and I wanted to keep this brief and just tell you the most important stuff. So as promised, I'm gonna go over some of the results from my experiment, and this tells me a lot about the YouTube algorithm and where YouTube is headed as a company. There's some very interesting results that I got here. So one question you might be asking is in terms of ranking on the YouTube search page, does it affect your ranking? And what I found is it had almost no effect on the ranking of the tags. As you can see here, uh, it kind of shows you which ones are ranking and I spelled lifestyle inflation wrong here. So no wonder it's ranking because nobody else 
probably did that, but it kind of uh, didn't really change at all with any of my experiments, or if it did, it got slightly better, but I think that might've just been because the videos were around for longer. So I noticed almost no change in terms of the ranking on the YouTube search. So at least it didn't penalize me. Even though the average view duration went down quite a bit, I don't think it actually penalizes your channel. So that means that YouTube uh, distinguishes between organic views and paid views, and they don't penalize you for getting a lower average view duration and also a lower click-through rate because of your paid views. So that means that YouTube is more or less rewarding you a little bit for running ads to your channel. Because I did notice that YouTube pushed my videos a little bit more even after I turned the ads off. So they do reward you a little bit for running ads to the channel. I mean, I didn't run like a million ads or anything like that, so I can't say for sure, but it does seem like YouTube rewards you for running ads to the channel. And that makes sense because they're making more money. Now, another thing that I noticed is after I cut the ads, so this is after I killed the ads, the click-through rate and the average view duration did go up a little bit. Now this could be for a multitude of different reasons. It could just be random chance. I mean, it was only 561 impressions over a seven day period. So it's not like I got a million impressions, but it did seem like the click-through rate and the average view duration went up. That might be because they're showing it to better targets. I'm not really sure, but it did help out a little bit in terms of the impressions and the click-through rate and the average view duration. And I noticed that across all the videos that I ran ads to. And most of the videos I ran ads to were completely dead videos, which means I wasn't getting hardly any impressions on any of those videos. They weren't my better ones probably. They were kind of the average or probably below average videos. And so I really had nothing to lose by running ads to those types of videos because YouTube wasn't showing it anyways. I did get a little bit of a boost in overall watch time. I think I maybe got a couple hundred hours of watch time, which is still only a small percentage, like five to 10% at most of what you need in order to get monetized, but it did help a little bit with the watch time. There's much better ways of getting to the 4,000 hours. I'm gonna make a video that's completely on how to get 4,000 hours when you're a small channel. It's very, very easy if you know what to do, but you do need to know what to do. I got 1,000 hours in just a few weeks, maybe a month at most once I knew how to get there. And like I mentioned, the videos that I used were dead videos. And so when I ran ads to them, it did seem like they got a little bit of a push in the system even after I shut the ads off. So overall, um, you don't need to use ads when you're a small YouTuber growing your channel, but I do believe that they help out quite a bit. They let the algorithm know what types of people that you want to show your ads to. And I really think that speeds up the whole process of the algorithm figuring out who they should show your ads to. And getting your first few hundred subscribers using this method is a really good idea. And you could maybe even do it up to a thousand subscribers. But after you get to a thousand subscribers, I really wouldn't recommend using it at all because there's just simply better ways of getting more subs that are cheaper and have a better return on investment. So under a thousand subscribers would definitely recommend using this. But if you're over a thousand subscribers, I, I'd say don't bother. Now, one question you might have if you're a really smart, savvy YouTuber, and I know a lot of my audience uh, is exactly that, is these subscribers that I got from ads, do you think they actually continue interacting with my videos? And the answer to that question is, I believe that they do. They had the choice to click on my ad, they clicked on my ad, they watched it, and then they decided to subscribe to my channel. You know, they had the choice of doing that. It wasn't something that just got blasted in their face like an annoying YouTube ad that shows up before, during, or after your video. They had the choice to click on it, they clicked on it, and they decided to subscribe. And so I do believe that they're very likely to watch my videos in the future. And some of them that subscribed uh, from seeing my ad have consistently commented on my videos over the months 
that they have been subscribed to me. Okay guys, so I am gonna make a few more videos like this going over you know, how I got to a thousand subscribers, some of the other methods I use that are probably even a little bit better than this method, and then also how I got a 4,000 hours of watch time and just other things that I recommend small YouTubers do in order to get monetized. So check out those videos here. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this. Ring the little notification bell and then comment down below any ideas you have and I will see you guys next time.